next person we've got to talk is Ian Forsyth, who is um, responsible for um, the creation and development of some absolutely fantastic mountain bike trails in the local area. There's a lot of, a lot of work around that, and that part of the community. These things are sometimes a little bit hidden away and we don't always see them as are some disciplined racing. So Ian's going to tell us about four cross mountain bike racing, which if I'm getting this right, is head to head racing, downhill, with contact. With contact. Yeah. With contact. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a few little videos as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so we, we <laughs> Without more of uh, uh, me going into that, uh, Ian, I'd like to come up with that. Tell us about that, so Ian Forsyth. Yes. Well, about me and my background, um, well really it all started when I was about six years of, what, six years of age, maybe a bit younger. Um, every time bikes rolled past I was obsessed with them, my mum always said, but I'd not shut up about it, phone go past, I'd be like, bike, bike, bike. So when I was six, she got me um, a little motocross bike, a Pee Wee 80, and I started going to a track in Preston. Uh, we used to go on it every weekend, and that's a picture of me and her at Ribchester at one of the local races that were, I think, were about 10 years old there, I'm a little 65. Um, <coughs> but yeah, it was brilliant. My whole, from my career from six years old up till 18, I went up in the ranks and over the years I got better and better and better. And then when it came to about 15, 16, I got really, really good. And made some quite good achievements. I won two 85 Northwest Championships and uh, my school boy, my one two five, the first season, I won that Northwest Championship also. Um, so yeah, there's a few pictures, and then this is uh, where it all started for the mountain bikes really, and the, the dirt jumping. So I came from the motocross, and I did a bit of BMX racing as well when I was about 13 to 16. Uh, never raced mountain bikes like these things, I was always racing motocross. My mum asked me if I wanted to stay in motocross or cycling and I chose to keep doing more cross as it was my passion from when I was tiny. Um, so yeah, that was, that was most of my young bike, but also the pedal biking. I can remember rolling around my kitchen at three years old on my first little rally bike that my mum bought me, so that just shows how much it's been in my life. I can still remember from when I was a child of that young, so yeah. Um, just always with the bikes after that. So then, 2019. So I didn't go into four cross straight away. I kind of fizzled out of motocross when I was 18. I separated my shoulder at the start of the season. And I had quite a lot of, what would you call it? Accidents after that. <laughs> uh, just silly accidents. For example, jumping into a pile of snow and then my, pop, my shoulder popped out, which was uh, not amusing. Um, so that happened five times in that season. After that, I, um, I kind of packed up my cross, I gave up, because it was too expensive. And obviously injuries had hindered me quite a lot, so to come back, it was too hard work. So I went into downhill mountain biking in 2019. That was my first season racing. After <coughs> I practiced all over the country, um, I got to know quite a lot of different people as I travelled around. They uh, they prompted me to go and do this first season, and I ended up having a go. Uh, the first race was up at Amsley Forest. Uh, that's actually the one of the downhill world champion riders bike park. Uh, he built that back, I think it must have been about 10 years ago now. Um, and I actually raced that track two weeks ago as well, which went quite well. To say that I don't race downhill on this type of bike anymore, I, I actually race downhill still now. But 
spot on my endurance bike. So it's got shorter travel and you can do a bit of everything on it. So that first season, I think we did three or four rounds and I managed to come second overall in my first amateur season from 19 to 29 years old. There were about 40 riders in that championship. So I really enjoyed that and it gave me motivation to come back and continue to race the year after. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, oh yeah. So we had that kind of break in the way with the COVID spell. So that kind of knocked it on the head for 2020, which was a bit of a shame because I was just getting going kind of thing. Uh, so after 2020, where you couldn't really go out much, but I tried to get out of it. My dog that's yeah, not here right now, <laughs> but um, I'd just go on local rides around first to keep fit and I'd be going to the gym at least four times a week to do kind of strength training but also I'd be doing kind of plyometrics and stuff like that for the explosiveness of the four cross, which a lot of you, a lot of you probably don't have a clue what four cross is because it's quite a small discipline of cycling. Um, it has been around for at least 20 years. Um, the bloke that is actually the British champion now, Scott Beaumont, if you want to look into him, he's, uh, he's been doing it for a long, long time and he's a big promoter of the sport as well. Um, but this was my first year. One of my friends said, oh, we've got to take my young lad to go and race this four cross race. And myself, like, a lot of you here probably think what's that. So I went and I went and thought I'll, I'll go and have a go. It sounds like motocross, but on a pedal bike. So brilliant. And 2021, I managed to win 95% of races that I did. So I, I had a blast. Obviously, you do when you're winning races, don't you? So um, same again with the COVID in 2021. It was a big thing with the downhill races, with a lot of people congregating in one place. They couldn't really run them, so I, it was brilliant that this came along because I could still go out and race my bike and not have to well, and compete because obviously I'm quite competitive. And uh, yeah, it was really good. They, uh, they do about four or five races in the season all over the place. Most of them are down south though, which is a bit of a shame, which is probably a big thing why not many people up here know about it, which is why I'm trying to spread the word kind of thing to see if people maybe could have funding or have somewhere to build a track for the northern lads kind of thing. And I've got to travel probably the shortest travel I've got is like probably three hours. And then nine and a half hours is the longest one down to uh, Falmouth in Cornwall. But yeah, it was brilliant. My first year, really happy with that. And uh, I then went on to 2022. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll just let you play a small video. I think it's a minute long of my first season in Four Cross. So that's me on um, at the front, going up inside lines. Not many people, <laughs> not many people did mountain biking. A lot of the lads that do this are actually ex BMX racers. So your Olympic BMX racing, that's where they come from with the start gear. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty close action anyway, and. It's opened my eyes 2022 anyway, compared to what 2021 did. Yeah, it was brilliant. What's the time scale? The time scale of the trail? Yeah, from, from start top, to top to bottom. Um, it can range from 35 seconds to a minute, maybe. That's it, from one minute? Yeah. So yeah, and it's quite explosive. Yeah. So where I come from downhill, where you're explosive at the start, and then you carry your momentum most of the way down, or enduro across country, you kind of 
at a level on you and you, you you go and go and go but in the four cross you're going that crazy down that first straight sometimes you blow yourself out by accident even which is what i've found in the 2022 season now as i've gone from amateur to professional in the four cross um, discipline it's massively different even from the pedals that a lot of you lot will probably use where being on the road bikes and stuff we clips in I'm, I've never clipped in I've always been on flat pedals but every other racer that I've raced against this year are all clipped in and when you're coming out of the start gate as soon as that drops I'll push with my left leg and that first first pedal goes down that's not the important one it's the second one and the third fourth fifth so when you clipped in you can pull as well whereas I can't pull with these um, with these pedals I've got some on my way but yeah I'm finding that when I'm going down the first straight I'm struggling because my feet are coming off but I've got the track speed so I'm coming from the back every race I've done this season I've basically come from the back in the first corner and then I've still luckily managed to win some uh, some of the heats not any finals so far I've won a B final so you'll do three heats in the morning um, and you've got to finish in the top two so you'll go one two three and then if you finish in the top two in each one you're basically guaranteed to go through to your semi-final and then if you're in the top two again you go through to the A final and then the lads that are in third and fourth will end up going to a they go to a quarter and a semi but if they come in the third and fourth again, they'll go to a B final, which determines fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. So there'll be an A final and a B final, and I've not managed to get an A final this year yet. But um, I'm trying my best, and that's all I can do really. Um, I have let it get to me quite a lot with mental health and stuff like that. It's um, I won't go into that too much, but it's it can get to you quite a lot when you've been winning and then you go to not winning it's it's just one of those things we walk across as well when i grew up when you came up into the next category you go down and then you work your way up slowly and then look at the top again which is what i'm hoping for at the end of this season i'm hoping to be in the finals i've got two more rounds left and yeah fingers crossed if I can get these clips on and get used to riding with my feet clipped in because I'm guessing I might fall over a bit more than I usually do um, <laughs> but yeah that, that was a question I was about to ask you Go on. Why, why are you not on the clipping when your opposition obviously is but you've, you've just answered the question I was going to ask <laughs> I think I'm very stubborn in, in some ways as well because last year I rode my enduro bike uh, against these four cross boys and I did quite well, I did race against the pros in one race last year and I did really well on it so I thought, do you know what, I'll buy myself a proper four cross bike with 26 inch wheels, what they use, which is quicker out of the gate because the, the, the rotations, yeah, you know what I mean and I bought this, I sold my downhill bike to buy that and I'm struggling quite bad on it at the moment really it's, it took a lot of getting used to and also at the end of 2021 I smashed my collarbone into four pieces mm. in the last round so this winter I've come through probably a seven month recovery and it wasn't easy which yeah it, it took a lot of a lot of mental a mental strength to keep training and to to not go and sit in pub all night and just get on my bike and go on, on local bike rides to keep me fit um, but this year it's been brilliant. I raced the World Championships in Scotland in Port William at the start of the season. Um, I literally went there just for kind of just to see what it was like, just for an experience. But it turned out I did really, really well and ended up seventh place in the world and won £250 prize from it, for, which I really didn't expect from the seventh place. But um, the British have come fifth. Sixth, fifth, sixth in the last four rounds. So it's not amazing, but I'm in the mix. So I know I've got the speed 
I've got the speed, but yeah, I think the video of the professional races might give it a bit more justice. As you can see on this picture, you get a lot closer in professional than you do in an amateur. Ready for next video? Yes. So you'll see a bit of contact in this one, I think, because I get a bit mad and try and look inside of him on this last corner. Not much, but you can imagine what it gets like. So this is one of the B finals, that's where I won one of the races from this year, which I was quite happy about. camper that we are go away and have our own in the our dog and his little family. And this is the world. So he he's the world champion that one there. And as you can tell, them two have clipped in because they're absolutely gone down first straight. Got someone trying to knock me off and then falling off his cell. Do you get to practice the courses? You do. You get an hour in the morning, or an hour or two in the morning, and then you go on do your heats, and you send your quarters and finals. But the the worlds, we went up on the Thursday. I think it was. I think we could do a bit of practice Thursday night. Yeah, it was practice Thursday night. Then Friday night was qualification, so they sent you down singly. You got a time off forty riders. I managed to qualify 16th and then put you in groups on the Saturday for the racing. So they'll put two in the middle, so 16th and 17th. Then they'll put the fastest rider and the slowest rider of the day. And that's what my first heat was. It was quite nerve wracking because the lad that I was racing against, that I usually race against, we have very, very close battles. We took each other out numerous of times, so I thought this is going to be either me, him, and obviously this professional number one qualifier will probably go through. And it turned out that we both went down in that first heat, me and this lad that I usually race with, and I managed to get up a little bit quicker. But the last place lad came past us, and I managed to get up quick enough to get up and then pass the last place lad, lad back. So come second and then go through to a quarter final and then I managed to just get through by skin of my teeth that, that quarter final and then I got my semi and um, I didn't get through the semi which would have got me to the A final and I'd have been top four in the world if I'd have done that but I got third in my it's quite confusing about many finals and races I do but yeah, I got third in that race and then that put me through to the B final, which I came third in as well. So I came seventh in that race altogether in the world. So that was brilliant. It was surreal with the crowds and people high fiving you on my out and stuff like that. It was some of that I used to watch on TV when I was a child myself. So it was brilliant being there. I love it. What's the actual cost, the annual cost of competing? The annual cost is £55 to race for the weekend in the British, same with the Worlds to enter. So it's £55 and then you're talking your diesel, which is costing a fortune. And what's the potential prize money? The prize money for the Worlds £1,500 for winning, one two for second, one for third, eight for fourth, and then it goes six for fifth, and then after sixth. I think it's 250 for the rest of them. So yeah, there's there's money to be made, but it's that's why we'd, we'd like the sport to be bigger because then there can be more money to be made. Because there's only there's only one professional in this country that rides full time a four cross bike, whereas there'll be full time downhill riders that there's 20 to 40 professional downhill riders that race that'll do it for a job and they won't have to work. Like, for example, the lad that beat me in my first downhill season, he's actually sponsored by New Proof now and he, he gets everything paid for, all his bikes, his travel, his accommodation. Um, it's a bit of a shame because it, it's, it's, sometimes it's who you know as well. It's not always what you can do, which 
has been quite a big factor in my life all my life. And it's, it's, I've got the talent to do it, but sometimes I've got the, the funds and like the backing what other people do. So. With the British side win, you just get trophies, don't you? Not really yeah, yeah the British, you just get a little glass trophy or something. <laughs> is like there a European arm of this? There is right? a European, which I don't know much about right at the moment. Um, I only just found out, found out about the European a few months ago. But for the money that I spend on the British, I think next year I really do want to do the world. The world it's called the Four Cross Pro Tour. So that's the World Championship, and then there is the European Championship as well. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to go and visit a few of them races next year and see what I can do. More the pro to it, because it's, it's the Worlds, and that's, that's the pinnacle of the four across sport. So if I can go and do a few of them and get a good place in that championship, like I'm only 27 now, and the lads are still racing professionally at 40 years old. And, and winning, so I've, I've still got plenty of time to progress. Like what I've said to Mary and a few of my mates, like my first year, I just want to see how I can do this year, see where I stand, and then this winter is big time training time. And yeah, get ready to win British Championship next year, basically, and try my best in the world. So yeah, that's my, my goals basically for next year, and. Um, Another little thing on the side, because I get a little bit of help off um, a local business called 2W Distribution, uh, they're actually based in Warley. They sell quite a lot of mountain bike gear. Um, it's mostly motocross gear, but they sell all sorts of stuff. That's my flag outside, so uh, kind of promote them. Um, and the t-shirts, they've given me a free kit for next year as well. But, I've been with them for two years. They give me a good discount on kits, which where they're based in Wall. Uh, they're on that industrial estate as you're just going out of where is it now? How past Goldstones. Goldstones on the left hand side. No, no, no. no. As if you're going to Aspen Hall Arms and then there's a big industrial estate on your right hand side. It's in the but if you go online, um, they've got endless endless kits and some brilliant colours and stuff like that. They've actually transferred from Fast House to the new make FXR which has just come out in 2018. So they're still actually, the company are still developing mountain bike kits because they're originally more cross. So I said they've only got really black kits for mountain bikes which I don't get because I know a lot of them do wear black kits in mountain biking but Myself, I like to stand out, so I'd love to have some bright kits. And he said, yeah, this winter is going to be bringing in some bright gear and stuff like that. So that's brilliant. But I've also set this race team up now, which is just getting the ball rolling. And I've started asking around for sponsorship for five or four of the lads from local towns. So I think there's two from Wally, uh, one from Richton and one from Atkinson all different age groups, so we've got a Masters, which is, he's 36, Matthew. Um, we've got Brad, who's 24, who's in the seniors, which is the first year that I raced, so that's the amateurs for 19 to 29. Then we've got two junior lads, uh, Ben and, who is it, Ben and Jack. So they're from Wally, they're, they're always up at the local track where we're going build as well. Um, so I, I'm just, just trying to help them out because they're interested in starting to race so I've suggested putting this team together and just managing it as best I can really and see if I can get them boys the help that I kind of got when I first started because it makes you feel better in yourself but it also helps you financially and I don't know, I just, it saves you a lot of hassle in the long run. But. Um, yeah, so fingers crossed that race team will do really well and you can recruit points with British Cycling and then at the end of the year if you've got so many points then you can actually end up winning prizes for it or cash prizes or what have they, what have they come up with. I'm not 100% on that yet, I've still got to make a few phone calls to British Cycling. So it's, uh, like I said, it's, 
in, in the running. Oh, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that's I think that's pretty much everything, yeah, other than now I'll show you a bit of everything that I do because I don't just do mountain biking, I do tricks and skate parks and yeah, a bit of everything. So just enjoy this video and then if you've got any questions then I'll be happy to answer them. teach also because I'd, I'd love to be able to bring the new generation through it'd be brilliant to see that because I have older I have an older friend uh, yeah I have a mess sorry if you're a squeamish but yeah uh, I have an old, I have a few older friends that have helped me over the years and pushed me and kind of I'll go to places and I won't be sure if I can do something and be like just, just do it but sometimes you do need something like that. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to say it'd be my dream job to to be, to have my own place and not have to cut grass and stand on big bankings all day for my utilities anymore. <laughs> and then there's these little pump tracks coming up all over the place as well. Uh, Bellow Solutions they're called. There's one in Accrington that they've just built, which is brilliant. It's always packed. One in Nelson, and uh, we were hoping for one in Great Harwood, but they dropped it unfortunately. That's in uh, North Wales. That takeoff must be about 12 foot high, so you can imagine how high up in the air you're going after that. And then this is this weekend where I'll race in Amsterdam Forest. Yeah. Do you own a mountain bike or is it? To the road. I would have got a roller bike, yeah. I'd, I'd like to get one, but it's, um, again, it's <laughs> financial. Exactly. Yeah. The, ne the next bike I want is an e-bike, because I just think they're, they're amazing for going on off-road excursions wherever you want, however long you want, because you can just carry on and carry on and carry on. They're so easy to ride. Uphill especially, downhill they're not amazing. I have demoed quite a few of them now and to be honest with you, I wouldn't buy it to go downhill. I really wouldn't. If you're gonna ride a bike, you're better off with just a normal bike to go downhill. So yeah, I think that, that, that will be my next thing though, just for training. But when you say the road bike, the road bike would benefit more than a new bike would do really. For, for the fitness side of things anyway. So maybe if someone gave me one, I'd definitely ride it. <laughs> I'd definitely ride it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, even even just uh, I don't know, I I would buy one. But you need to find out if United Utilities have got cycle to work skin. Yeah. They do, they do get it, they do have it, yes. But um I need a new jump bike before I need a new roll bike. I've got three bikes, so I've got, I've got the four cross and roll, and then that's my, that's my dirt jumper there. It's a hard tail, 
and I just got that off my friend for 500 pounds two years ago, so it's nothing special, but as you'll know, the more you spend on a bike, the more bike you're going to get. So it's. Um, yeah. What's the full cross bike cost? That were two and a half second hand. So yeah, it's not, but it's, if I was to buy it now, it'd probably be four. Yeah. So, What's the difference between that and a mountain bike? I've got my mountain biking van as well, so I, 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 I can't bring it up. So, my mountain bike, so this is 26 inch, my mountain bike is 29 inch wheels, so I can travel over the rough stuff a lot quicker. You get a nice box, and I bought it like that, so that was a big selling point for me because I like shiny things. Um, it's got a lot shorter travel, so I think around 100 mil travel there on 120, whereas on my mountain bike we're on 150, 160 travel, so I go down here. Uh, same on the back, tiny travel, 100 mil. Um, on the mountain bike, 150 again. Uh, what else would it be? The geometry as well. This is, it's a lot, lot smaller frame, so I can be more snappy with it. Whereas the big bike, it's a bit more sluggish. But then, the thing is, I found with this thing, when I get up to top speed, it's a bit skittish. Whereas when I'm on my big bike, it just flies over everything. It's so smooth and you feel a lot more in control, which is a big thing we're getting used to this, which I've struggled with. And I've had to mess about with my handlebars, putting them down, because they were really wide at first. So I was riding and going to a corner, and because they were so wide, you had made the front wheel almost turn more when you turn, so you needed to kind of, it just wasn't comfortable. So I ended up putting them down from 800 mil to 760. So I took quite a lot off, but I found it's a lot better now. Also, tires as well. I think I've got the wrong tires on at the moment. These are your kind of standard mountain bike tires. Your Maxis Minions and your High Roller. So before cross, you're better off with a smaller tread because your your resistance will be less, so you will you be able to roll faster basically. So well, there's not much more difference really between it's like a mini mountain bike really. So yeah, that's as much as I can say about the difference without showing you the other bike as well. Let's grab it here. You got it? Let's grab it. We'll bring it up after. Yeah, um, I think that's. I think I've covered pretty much everything. So I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks very much.